At the end of last year, we saw an amazing surge in the stocks of all quantum computing firms. I must admit that this caught me completely by surprise. I really should have bought some D-Wave stocks. They shot up by like 1000% since the beginning of the year because of nothing really. So what's going on? Have people just totally lost their mind? It's not a possibility that I'd easily dismiss, but maybe there's something else going on. I recently came across an interesting panel discussion among quantum computing experts that I think shed some light on what's fueling this hype. This discussion took place in November at the Conference on Quantum Techniques and Machine Learning. The following exchange is between Scott Aronson from the University of Texas in Austin and Edward Fari from MIT. Both have done a lot of work on quantum computing, but they have very different ideas about scientific integrity. You know, I am dealing with people who see all these papers and have taken from them the impression that, well, there must be a quantum advantage for all these tasks that is known, okay. or else why are people writing all these things about it? I mean, we've seen companies, you know, go public on, you know, claims about, you know, these kinds of applications or, you know, pitch to investors on these claims. And they say, well, look, there's papers about it. And so I think sometimes, you know, it's not enough when writing a paper to not say anything false. Rather, you know, in an environment like this, one has to anticipate and head off, you know, the ways that people are going okay. to misinterpret things. Well, I, I don't but understand I this. I don't feel this burden whatsoever. I don't care. All right. I just don't right, care. Well, well, I find well, well, it odd yeah. that you feel like this is, you know, something well, you have to fight for. I mean, I don't care what people say. I don't care what people say after they read my papers. I just care that my papers are correct. That's it. Um, my papers are correct, period. Well, okay. I mean, I, I would say if, if some people don't feel the burden, then that doubles the burden that other people have. That's quite something. But before I say more about their disagreement, let me tell you how crazy the quantum situation has become. Quantum computing is an existing technology, but it's far away from being practically useful. In principle, quantum computers could make certain calculations much faster, and that could become useful one day in areas such as material design, finance or logistics. In reality, the best use cases are rapidly being occupied by artificial intelligence, especially in quantum chemistry. And for quantum computers to become practically useful, the number of qubits that they can work with needs to dramatically increase from currently around 100 to about 1 million, though the details depend on the error rate and the type of problem. Yes, it's nice that Google demonstrated that error correction works as advertised at 100 qubits or so, but they still need to scale that to a million. And the question is, isn't just whether it's possible, but whether it's possible at a reasonable cost. By my personal estimate, commercially useful quantum computers are at least a decade away. And so, quantum computing companies currently make money by renting out cloud access to small quantum chips for research purposes which most of them do through Amazon's cloud service. In November, Amazon announced that they're starting a quantum embark program that they say will help customers to get into the quantum computing business, which I remind you is a business that doesn't exist. But the stocks of several quantum computing companies, including D-Wave, Rigetti and IonQ, promptly shot up. The surprise surge even impressed CNBC's Jim Cramer who correctly noted, however, that these companies don't have any revenue. So let's start with the unprofitable quantum computing plays, because the best performer of the Weber, at least so far, is a company called Quantum Computing. That's Q-U-B-T for you, home givers. It's up and astounding 588%. That's closely followed by two more quantum plays, D-Wave Quantum and Ion Q both of which have more than doubled month to date. That last one sounds like a TV station I'm not working for. Honestly, I have no idea what's behind the sudden interest in these quantum computing stocks. Don't ask me to explain the gods of either. You need a physics degree to get your head around it. And trust me when I say that most of the buyers do not have one. Uh, 
Yeah. Again, I have no edge in quantum computing, but I do know that QUBT is losing money and has hardly any revenue. Then in December, there was the now infamous Google press release that claimed they'd found evidence for parallel universes and the stocks of anything quantum rose even further. This time we got Yahoo Finance commenting on the matter, again pointing out that none of these companies are profitable. The crazy fast capabilities of quantum computing will be indispensable for training AI models, collecting data and modeling systems. That's according to Google Quantum AI's founder. He hopes it will enable breakthroughs in medicine, batteries and energy alternatives. In the quantum computing space, you got IonQ, quantum computing, D-Wave systems and Rigetti computing have all seen their combined market caps surge 171%. So more broadly, quantum stocks have been under a bit of pressure. Currently, none of them operate at a profit. Both D-Wave and Rigetti have faced stock delisting multiple times due to low share performance. And the runway for mainstream adoption of quantum is a long one. Middle of November, the stocks start to drop again, but still the market is expected to grow, according to some forecasts by more than a factor of 10 within the next next decade. Why? Why is this happening? Well, that returns us to the panel discussion. In it, Scott points out repeatedly that physicists produce a lot of papers on quantum computing. Most of these papers aren't useful because not everything that is somehow quantum is faster than a conventional computer. In fact, most of the time it's not. But physicists frequently fail to disclose this. By doing so, they raise the impression the field is rapidly progressing when the truth is that not much is happening. This is why Scott is saying it's not enough to not say anything false, but that scientists need to make sure that what they say can't easily be misinterpreted. To which Edward Forey replies, I don't care what people say after they read my papers. I just care that my papers are correct. Now imagine that this exchange wasn't about quantum computing, but about drug development. You write a paper that only contains correct statements about a drug that cures cancer. And somewhere in Appendix D, you mention that your trial was, of course, as usual, done in mice. Most people will miss that, and you know it. But you didn't say anything false, so you don't care. If people misinterpret your finding, you don't care. If companies present your paper to collect money from investors, you don't care. If the company goes public and your neighbor buys stocks and then loses his savings when the bubble bursts, you don't care. I don't think that this attitude will do much to increase trust in scientists. Now look, I don't want to blame an entire research area for what one guy said. But I too have noticed what Scott is saying. A lot of authors who publish on quantum computing are not very forthcoming with details which are necessary to put their work into context. How much does this affect quantum stocks? I guess we'll need a quantum computer to find out. Yes, I've been talking about quantum physics again. It's definitely my favorite topic. But did you know that I have a quantum mechanics course that you can take for free on Brilliant? My course will help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with a course on quantum computing or differential equations. Brilliant offers courses on a large variety of topics in science, computer science and mathematics. All their courses have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. Whether you want to know more about large language models or algebra, want to learn coding in Python or know how computer memory works, Brilliant has you covered. It's a fast and easy way to learn and you can do it whenever and wherever you have the time. And they're adding new courses each month. And of course, I have a special offer for viewers of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabine or scan the QR code, you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days. And you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.